Oh yeah, we back in action. Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, another Q&A, back to my roots. This is where it started, raw, loose, quick fire. Silent Mike with 2Ks on Instagram and Twitter if you wanna get involved. We're twitching as much as we can, live streaming, built a dope community to be able to chat with you guys live. Link in the description. Mama's Boys Podcast. Weekly episodes, if not twice a week. iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, soon to be Spotify, mamasboyspodcast.com. Check it all out below. Let's get to your questions, ladies and gentlemen. How do you warm up before a benching? Um, for me, the most of my warm ups are pretty specific. So I take the barbell for, you know, one to three sets of 20 to 30 reps, and then I slowly add weight building up to my working weight. Uh, I also do like to do some kind of band pull apart, warm up my back, my rotary cuffs, uh, as well as some kind of face pull. Um, if I'm feeling real cold or something feels a little iffy, then I'll do a little extra warm up, some push ups, something of that nature, but uh, that's typically it. Mike, another warm up question. Mike, how many sets do you do before getting into your working weight? Um, so that's almost impossible to say, my man, because if my working weight on bench is 275, I may only do three or four sets to get there. Uh, but if I'm warming up to 650 pounds for uh, doubles on deadlift, I may take eight sets to get there. So it all depends on how strong you are. Typically, you know, five, maybe 10% jumps for the couple uh, beginning jumps and then 5% jumps leading on to the working weight. Uh, it's a good general, general guideline. How come I don't need to adjust my one rep max for a 10 week program. Wouldn't the percentage no longer represent my true one rep max? Or does it not matter? Great fucking question. So, uh, when you're running a, you know, eight, 12, 16 week program, do you need to update your one rep max? Because perhaps you got stronger in that program. It all depends on the program, it all depends on the goal, and it all depends on the individual. I know you hate that uh, answer because that's the truth and everybody hates the truth. So, for multiple reasons I would say no, you don't have to update it, but it kind of depends. Um, if you're a beginner, a true beginner, you'll be able to PR and your one rep max will go up every single week. How so, Mike? Because you're detrained and your body's so willing to adapt to the new stimulus uh, and the new skill acquisition that you're getting. You're getting better at the bench press weekly, plus your muscles are getting stronger, repairing quicker, uh, because you're not actually handling the type of loads that your body's actually ready to handle. So you'll be able to progress very rapidly. From there, it might be every two weeks, every four weeks uh, that you can PR in the lifts. This will obviously depend on age, genetics, and some other things. This is talking about pure beginners. As you get more advanced, that's pretty much the defining factor between a beginner and intermediate is how long in between it takes for you to PR or hit a new personal record. Um, eventually, you know, the best in the world are hoping for a small five pound, 10 pound PR every 12, 16, or even 20 weeks. And that's why it says it depends. Now, if you are not a pure beginner and you can't PR every week or every other week, I still don't think you should update your one rep max. Again, based on the program, let's just blanket statement, say we're going for a 12 week peak program. So we're going to test our one rep max at the end. The chances or the percent that you got stronger throughout the entire program won't really affect the program that much until you test anyways at the end, because you, depending on the program, you're not going to make a 150% gain in your one rep max. You know, if it's five or 10%, that will all show itself at the end when you test anyways, and then you can repeat the program with those updated. When we're programming, I mentioned this in the last Q and A, as long as you're kind of hitting a range on that day, that's why RPEs become so popular and it, and it is very effective because you just kind of have to hit this, re this target. You don't have to hit the bullseye every day of the weight to get the proper stimulus to progress. As long as you're kind of in that range that we're aiming for that certain stimulus, depending on the program, depending on the day and the intent of that workout, you'll make progress and be just fine. So I wouldn't overthink it, don't overstress it, follow the program, test at the end, and then rerun a program with the new updated maxes. Will I ever go back to conjugate training? Um, probably not, uh, not while I'm competitive power lifter. You know, I think the frequency is enough for me. Um, the variations, uh, I don't, think they work the best for the majority of raw power lifters. I've done many videos on this. I think if you're raw power lifting, you need more competition lifts than typical conjugate does. I know I could make it my own in these things, but 
I prefer the style of training I do. Um, I believe in it. Uh, I think it's time tested. I think it's it's proven through many other coaches and systems, but it's proven through myself as a lifter and as a coach with everyone I've worked with. So I think I'm gonna stick with that. If um, you know, I, I totally wrap up and, and just don't power lift per se anymore. Yeah, I, I can mess around with some kinds you get. Speaking of variations, we got a decent lifting question here. Board press or floor press as a variation for the bench press, which one do you prefer and why? Uh, I'd say if I had to choose one, it would probably be the floor press. Uh, personally and from experience with other athletes and being in the gym, a board press is an awesome movement, but for a lot of lifters, they're so uncomfortable with that bench on, or excuse me, the board on their stomach uh, that they'll miss groove and they'll untighten their back more often than not, that their bench form will just go to the window and they're just worried about touching that board. So uh, I would say what I would throw in there is maybe a spoto press where you're kind of pausing at different heights, um, you know, two inches off the chest, just a little pause and come back up, just controlling it yourself. I think this more so reinforces a tight back and control of the barbell. Uh, and then I'd say the floor press for the same reason. If you're going to use a variation, let's go outside of the box a little bit uh, and let's really, you know, kind of pause our triceps on the ground before we explode back up. And I think you find a good groove and a good carryover um, from the floor press itself. What to do in the gym after a meet or a peak? Uh, kind of up to you, you know, uh, if all is healthy and you're feeling good, uh, it might be another time to have some fun and try something a little different. Uh, it's also a good time to just chill, maybe do some dumbbell work, maybe take it completely off. Uh, kind of depends on your mental state and what will get you motivated to continue on the gym. So maybe test another one rep max, maybe uh, just do some dumbbell work, have some fun, or maybe take it completely off and then get back into things in a couple weeks. What tip you would give all lifters, whether they're beginners or experienced? That's a good question. Tip I would give anybody, uh, and this is lifting, life, business, is have some patience. Uh, have some patience. Things always take longer than you think they will. And if you have patience and stick to the plan or stick towards your goal, or at least have that goal in your mind daily, uh, you'll get there. Uh, and that's not to be some motivational bullshit guru because you all know I hate some motivational bullshit gurus. But uh, truth is, is if you have patience and you stick to a plan, you're going to get a lot closer to that goal than you ever would without those two things. And those are literally the only two, th two things you need. You need a little bit of patience, maybe a lot of patience, more patience than you think you need. You need it and some type of plan to get there. And that's all you need. You're welcome. That'll be $8,000. Send it to my pay pal. What are your thoughts on only deadlifting singles? My thoughts on only deadlifting singles is it's probably not optimal. Now, there are some instances that you might be able to get away with something of that nature where you're only deadlifting singles once a week at a higher intensity and catching some volume on a variation like a block pull or a stiff leg or something of that nature. But I think the majority of time, all lifts are gonna be similar to some extent where if we wanna get better at that lift, we're gonna to have to slowly build volume and frequency over time. So if you wanna get better at the deadlift, we're gonna to have to get some deadlifting muscles and the way to get deadlifting muscles is to build them with some reps, uh, maybe some variation, but definitely some reps, some volume, some frequency. So deadlift singles, can you lift a lot of weight that way? Sure, I'm sure somebody has and their comments are gonna be blasted below. Mike, so-and-so deadlifted 900 pounds by only doing singles. Proud of that guy, and I'm proud of you for knowing that random ass fact that no one cares about. But I think for the majority of people, you're going to have to do some volume, you're gonna to have to do some work. If you had to pick three exercises besides the squat, deadlift, and the bench to build a routine around, what would they be? Chin up, love me some chin ups. Overhead press, build them delts. And I don't know if this counts, but I hope it counts, we'll do the front squat. And if that doesn't count, we'll do the Bulgarian split squat. There you go, shove it in your pipe, smoke on that one. Mike. What is your best and or favorite point guard in the NBA right now? Y'all know I love some basketball. Comment below your favorite point guard or favorite player in all professional sports right now. Type it in, hit enter, tag a friend, tell them, say, hey, your, your, your player sucks, my player's the best. Um, my favorite point guards, because I can't make any decisions in my life right now. Steph Curry might be one of the, probably the best point guard in the league right now. It's pretty hard to argue against. My favorite point guard in the league right now is a tie with my man, Isaiah Thomas. I know he's been injured, but he's still my boy. And the one and only, Russell Westbrook. That boy is a stud. I love watching Russell Westbrook. If I could make me somebody, I'd make me some Russell Westbrook from the style to the big dunks like this coming down the lane. <laughs> Russell Westbrook's a man. I'm a big fan, uh, but there's a lot of good point guards. Kyrie Irving's a stud, although he left my Cavs. I'm not that mad about it. I mean, I'm mad about it, but I'm not that mad about it. Is healthy eating beat training? 
from my man, Danky Meme. Well, Danky, let me tell you a thing or two about healthy eating. Now, I'm gonna say that depends on the goals. I think the combination of everything, if you're talking longe longevity of life, healthy living, having a long, healthy, happy life, happy wife, whatever these people say, these married folks, uh, or being a perform, performance athlete. My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama said it's the Amdula Amugada that makes him upset. Sorry, that was a bad quote. I had half the quote. I was trying to do my, uh, I don't even know his name, Bobby Boucher. Mama, I like her boobies. And she showed me her boobies and I, I, I like them too. Back to the question, Becky meme. What'd she say? I, I like Becky. And she like me too. She showed me her boobies. And I like them too. My, my, my mama says, who about the devil? <clears throat> That's all I got, Connor. Sorry, bro. No handshakes in the video. We're on one today, ladies and gentlemen. I had too many rock stars. <laughs> Does healthy eating beat training? Danky memes. Shout out Danky memes. If you're just going for longevity of life, I think it has to be almost a clear cut combination of both. If you're going for pure performance, I think lifting is going to take priority. If you're going for pure looks or losing weight, I think diet is going to take priority. Hopefully that breaks it down for you. Obviously, I think optimally for longevity of life, performance and looks, combination of both. But I'm just saying, if you have to just choose one, you know, and I just want to live a long time, ah, that's a hard question. The living a long time is a, is a hard one to say because I think it's such a combo of both. Performance, I definitely think that training is priority. Uh, and losing weight, gaining weight, obviously I think priority is nutrition, but obviously the combo is gonna matter, bro. Just do both. That hard? Just do a little bit of both. Eat decent, lift some weights, eat decent, lift some weights. <laughs> what type of leg exercises, excuse me? What type of leg exercises did you do while dealing with my back injury? So when I didn't squat and deadlift, I took six to eight weeks off to chill, to work, to give my back a break. Um, if I had the option, which I didn't because I was traveling in places, I would do a belt squat. That's what I did last time I tweaked my back. The belt squat is a lifesaver. This time around, I didn't have access to that. So what I did um, is I did some Bulgarian split squats uh, with holding uh, a weight on my up, on the opposite of my up foot on the Bulgarian to uh, add some balance and some core work, you know. That's right, put it where, eat that salad, no dessert, uh, and then lunges. Uh, just focusing on staying even and still working some of my legs. Plus, I was doing some high-intensity indoor ball training mm, kit, uh, and I was doing some assault bike sprints. How to build a bigger bench. My man. I can't say how many videos I've done on building a bigger bench. Eat some foods, be in a calorie surplus, focus on your technique, focus on a solid program that has you benching a couple times a week, do it for a long time, rinse and repeat, bench 405. Guys. I appreciate you. I'll see you on Twitch. I'll see you in the next video. We're dropping videos Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Subscribe, turn on notifications. I appreciate you. Silent Mike, head down, chin up. Me, do me, we out of here.